this 1965 Chevy pickup, we got a dual master cylinder booster. We got an LS swap 5.7 in there, aluminum radiator. We went ahead and powder coated our inner fenders and such to get the engine bay looking pretty nice. We've got a um, brand new windshield, brand new rubber. We got our upholstery redone, new carpeting, Dakota Digital Dash. We got a brand new roof, all painted up looking nice, as is the interior. We went ahead and swapped it from a small window to a big window. We chopped the frame. We chopped our bed right here. We got brand new bed wood inside. We got it slammed on airbags, of course. And we've got disc brakes up front. Now, 18 days ago, this was a bone stock, really rusty, rat infested truck. The rust on the roof was so bad, you could literally put your hands right up inside it. The bone stock height, drum brakes, single reservoir master cylinder, you get a leak anywhere in the line and you are dead. It was a long bed, small window, the upholstery was just atrocious. It, the bedwood was completely missing all together. It had a big ugly bumper on the back that some people actually like. Three on the tree, manual transmission, 292, straight six engine. All right, so this week on our 65 Chop Drop LS Swap, we're gonna be laying the infrastructure to get our engine running. So we're gonna have to hook up our radiator, transmission lines, fuel lines. We'll need to get our pump going and we'll see if we can get our electrical. Let's see how far we can take this in the time we got. Stay tuned. So we started on our gas tank and uh, mainly it's because Simon had already started on it last week when Edgar and I were working on the engine. Now I've already got a video for you guys on installing an EFI, an electronic fuel injection fuel pump into a gas tank. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here, but I will say this, make sure that you do take your time before you place that hole in that gas tank because you got sending units that have to go up and down and need clearance. Sometimes you'll have baffles and things like that that in there so take a little bit of time on that before you drill that hole out what you got going uh, nice dull hole saw so at least took it off my drill bit flipped it upside down and then i gotta find the center point because i gotta start the hole or at least get it assume where it's going to line up so get dead center i'll probably do an eighth inch pilot hole so when i go screw this guy in there and it's not gonna have no guessing like hmm, that looks right it's better be right it's no choice <laughs> So after you get done uh, grinding these edges here and after you drill everything, then just take this magnet and toss it in there and then just slosh it around and it'll pick up all of the, the metal shavings that are down in there. around with some WD-40 oil or what? Uh, you can do that too, but then you have to clean the WD-40 out too. So what about throwing some gas in there and toss it? Yeah, maybe. Uh, try this first and see how it works and then, and, and then go from there. And then do that? Have a little less work on the magnet? Or? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Get the big chunky monkey out first and then we'll leave this for the smaller little fragments that might get into the... Alright, I'll vacuum and blow it out. Might as well finish up all the ugly work first, so... Yeah, yeah. Got to drill all the holes and clean right. the edges. This is going to keep throwing more metal in there. Yeah. So I'll get that going. Cool, cool. Alright. I'm going to move this so it don't get shit in it. Oh, yeah. All right, so Simon got the gas tank set up for us quite a bit. We're putting the fuel pump in and such. So we're gonna go ahead and do him a favor and get it installed here. We actually got lucky and these holes were already lined up 
and uh, we just have to put our straps on here. We're going to roll the gas tank underneath and get it set up. When you do, you got to remember to put a board underneath your gas tank or you're going to do damage to it. Move that out of the way for a second, please. Okay. All right. Come over here, please. What do you got going in here? Tear down this ugly old box. Pull a nice new paint. Lots of different options for how we want to route this thing. Probably, obviously, it's 65. We got a straight pipe, no caps, nothing to weld in. We got some full on kit here. It comes with two different camp exhaust. So I guess we're going to have to make a dual exhaust system out of all this pipe. Probably need to get a couple more straight sections, but I'm pretty sure that's more than enough for our new bound short bed. All we have to decide is where we want it coming out. So we've laid out our Flowmaster exhaust on here. We just want to put it on the ground, kind of get an idea, pace things out. And then we're going to go ahead and stick it up underneath the truck. Now this is specifically made for a 65 short bit, so it should go right on in. Let's find out. So the exhaust took a little bit longer than what we figured for. I mean, it, it was specifically designed to go in the truck, but uh, with the LS swap, the chop, the gas tank, et cetera, et cetera, it didn't go in exactly like they figured. And we had to take our time on it because you can cut metal shorter, but you can't cut it longer. I'd say Simon probably spent six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours on it, and partly because he's got a little bit of an OCD thing going on. But you really want that when you're having somebody work on your vehicle. Uh, like I said, it took us longer than we figured for, but um, you got to take your time on these kind of things if you want it to come out right. What can I tell you, baby? I mean, we'd still want another, you know, well, just a little bit of clearance in between that. But anyway, that muffler ain't right. No, so you just turned it around. So. Yeah, that's the next thing. But see, I, I don't, I don't um, yeah, turn it around, see what happens. Yeah, that ain't going to work. All right, well, we ain't going over the axle, so that's for sure. No. Nothing else is going to be all that plausible, so... So it might be for a 65 pickup, and not a 65 pickup slammed on bags. What do you think, Dave? Do you think it's possible what? to turn this in the other way to make this go underneath this instead of over? You could, but if you go underneath, the, the arms are going down. Yeah, that's why you have to go too low or, underneath to actually be safe. Yeah, I but think that's this okay angle, there. The 45, won't this elbow be over here? Um, it's all cleaned up and prepped for weld. I was wondering. Is this more like sheet metal? It's not a lot thicker than sheet metal, but it's real thin stuff right. by comparison to like yeah, frame yeah, welding. Yeah. So are we doing this one quick tag, let it cool, one over here every two inches type thing just to keep the heat um, off? Or can you give it a little more love or what's your- Yeah, so what you want, first you'll want to get it, just get one tack weld and yeah. then get it and then, and and then, then get it straight. That angle. Yeah, and then, and then get a, two or three extras on there. Yeah. Then you can just go zot, 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 right. zot. Yeah, no, I think that's okay. I think we'll get, we'll formalize the front a little bit more and then we'll, and then we'll double check this and then maybe we'll cut a little bit off of this to get a little extra there. But I think you're, but, but I think it's okay where it is. Like that, that close to the shock wouldn't bother me. Another reason being is that the shock's gonna go back this far. So it's even yeah. going back further. So yeah, I, I don't think we have any problems with the shock at all with everything, with the length that we got going right now. All right, well then we'll go ahead and get it a little more tightened up and we'll see where we're at. All right. all right, you see all this mess of wiring here? Now I could go through all that wiring, take out what I don't need and rewire it and stuff, but it takes a long time, talking like five, 10 hours or what have you. And even then, your uh, location that you'll be able to put your computer is limited. You're probably be stuck with putting it in the engine bay which I don't prefer because the heat and the elements and etc what you want to do is go and get a Holly Terminator 
uh, system because all of this wiring gets reduced down to this. There's a few extra little ones, but basically it's all down to this. And this just makes it a lot easier, a lot neater. And I'm gonna be able to put the computer inside the cab where it'll be protected from the elements. This is just gonna take me a lot less time and it's um, just gonna be a lot easier. You also get a nice little handheld um, control unit. And on that, it just tells you all kinds of stuff your RPMs, your um, gas mapping, your uh, it just goes on and on and on and on. So it's a really, really complete system. If you want to add turbos, blowers, all kinds of stuff like that, you can add it on with this system here. It's made to be uh, very ambidextrous that way. Now you got two different systems. You got a drive-by wire and you got a drive-by cable. So cable, that's your mechanical style, you know, when you put on your gas and it has something that physically moves. This right here is what's known as a drive-by wire. So just an electrical pigtail is going to go in there and just by pressing on this, it's gonna tell the computer how fast you wanna go or not. You'll need to find a nice, comfortable place to put this with your seat and your, um, your footing, and et cetera, et cetera, and get this bolted into the right spot. And then you'll just go ahead and connect everything up and we'll be driving by Saturday. Saturday. are in my way up front so I'm gonna take care of some things in the back here most notably right now are ground so ground is uh, you've heard this joke a thousand times for me I'm sure if you have any electrical problems the first thing you check is your ground the second thing you check is your ground the third thing you check is your ground it's not a funny joke it's an accurate joke anyway you got to make sure your grounds are making good contact it's not gonna make good contact through paint So we gotta make sure we have a real clean area. We also wanna get a little bit of dielectric grease and put them on things like that. It keeps corrosion at bay and keeps your electric conductivity high. So what we'll be doing is just making sure that these lines are long enough, okay? Because you gotta remember that in the future, you might have to drop this gas tank in order to do the sending unit or the fuel pump. And if you had these lines really short and tight, when you dropped it, you would cut the lines. So you gotta make sure Sure that they're long enough for you to be able to drop it and you be disconnect them. That's your helpful handy hint for the day. I then got me a vice and I put my pipe in it. Try to trust it, try to weld it, but guess what? It ain't bolted to nothing, it's not working for nothing. So we're gonna go quick. I've been working too long. Let me let get in my way. Maybe like, I don't know, like it's supposed to be in the first place. We got this thing handy, so why not? Now you got yourself halfway decent vice, good enough to weld on. Yeah. The exhaust is all together and it is looking really good. Now I've only got a tack welded together right now, so I'm going to go ahead and run the uh, frame through its paces up and down, make sure I don't have any clearance problems anywhere I didn't expect. Then I can go ahead and take it out and weld it all up. I'm also going to get started on the drive shaft. Let me show you how I did that. So cut this off right here as nice and straight as possible and cut it off right here as nice and straight as possible. This might be in your way, so you might have to cut it down around here. All right, so, is comfortable. Um, so go ahead and do that and then um, when you're done. 
All right, so technically speaking, this is how you want to measure your drive shaft. See right here, you've got the universal joint bearing right here. You don't measure from the back of that, you measure from the face. Now maybe some drive shaft places, they like to measure differently, but this is from what I understand the way all the guys in my neighborhood do it. So you're gonna measure from that, you're gonna come all the way forward, and then you are going to measure where the drive shaft or the the shaft of the transmission comes out so th since this yoke is on you can't see it but the shaft that's coming out of the transmission sticks out of there about a quarter of an inch now when you have this right here this front yoke you do not hold that for me please you do not want this yoke to be bottomed into the transmission like this because when your rear end is going up and down this drive shaft is going in and out so if you bottomed it out right here then when it moved forward it would jam into the transmission and cause you problems in the future so we want to have about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch right here now the reason that i um basically just made this basic drive shaft right here is because quite consistently when i take my measurements to the drive shaft shop they always come up with an inch too long or an inch too short so i don't know what so i made this to physically fit in here i know this is the exact measurement so all they have to do is make me an exact duplicate you're not gonna do your drive shaft at home. Take it to a shop. It needs to be balanced. It needs to be done correctly or you will get wild vibrations. All right, so we had to modify the hoses that are gonna be going to the engine because nothing is stock right here. Nice, easy way of doing that is you just get some pipe and you just go ahead and bend it into the shape that you need. Then you go to the auto parts store and find something that's as close as you can get and go ahead and put it together. Like for instance, this one here, the hose was too long. So we just cut it right in the center and we just put a sleeve in there, which is nothing more than an exhaust pipe cut to the right length. We'll have to get some hose clamps on that of course but you can see this is nice and neat you can do the same thing on your lower one you're just going to go ahead and bend it into shape find your your uh, duplicate at the auto parts store and you're good to go but this is going to take you a minute normally so expect that that's it for this week everything's looking really good and now i can go ahead and put my cab back on but first i've got to take care of a lot of rust on the roof i'm going to be putting a big window in the back i've been putting this off for a long time i've not been looking forward to this so make sure that you stay tuned and check out next week when we cut that cab all up and put it back together again Make sure you check us out on Facebook and Instagram, whatever else they got going on these days. And make sure you subscribe because if you don't, I don't know, Chicken Little, the sky's going to fall. You know, I can't come up with something funny every single time off the cup. It's a lot of pressure on me and stuff, I, you know. But next time I'll have something funny for you. I swear to God, I will.